I love to talk about productivity and organization. And I've done a few videos on this topic in the past and I've talked about tools that I use, but today I really wanted to dive fully into how I organize my life with Trello. So I've done a couple other videos and I've talked about Tre Trello before, but ever since I started working online and started working remotely, Trello has been the thing that has kept me organized and on task and all the thoughts in my brain somewhere else so that I could focus on other things. I will have some clips uh, show up here on the screen as I talk, but for the most part, I just wanna talk you through how I set up my Trello board, why I set it up that way, how it helps me. And then I'll also go through some different boards I've used in the past. I don't necessarily use them right now, but it'll just give you an idea of maybe different ways that you could use Trello most effectively for your life. Because really, at the end of the day, the best tool is the tool that you use. I really believe in Trello as a personal to-do task list. I know it's not for everybody, but I think it can be used in a lot of different ways. So that is what we are going to talk about today. Okay, so to start off with how I actually organize my Trello board, I do have a lot of lists. Um, and I will go over some of the more general ones that I have later that you may or may not be relevant to your life. Um, but I think these first few that I'll discuss, you'll really resonate with and have a better understanding of why I do it this way. For ongoing tasks, like things I actually like have to get done, whether it's work or business or life, I use three main lists. So my first list that I use is my today list. It's really, really that easy. I put all of the cards, um, and then one of the reasons I love Trello is everything is drag and drop. So there's not a lot of clicking, there's not a lot of having to go in and go out. I can just move things around very easily and put them in any order that I want to. So I typically make my today list the night before or at the end of the work day. I like to kind of see what I have coming up the next day. So in my today list, I will include literally everything I have to do for the day. So if you know anything about time management and task management, you should combine your work and life tasks. So this board is my business and life board. It has everything on it. That will be everything from client tasks to maybe even social media things I need to do that day for my business and then you know finishing the day with a workout or maybe I have a happy hour scheduled or a networking thing scheduled. All of that is going to go on my list for the day. There's a couple reasons for this. So sure when you are at work, say you have an office job and you're at work, you're only going to have your business tasks there. But if you really want to get a holistic view of where all your energy expenditure is going and really what's being asked of you on a daily basis, it's really good to combine all of your tasks. Um, and it gives you just a really, a more realistic expectation of what you're going to be able to achieve. Most people put too many things on your to-do list. I am guilty of this as well. But once you start combining all the things of your life into one, you start to get a better idea of what you can actually fit into one day. So that is my first list. It's just today's tasks. And then my second list is my this week list. So I have cards for each day of the week and I typically will go in either Sunday night or Monday morning first thing and start, you know, putting in my cards for that week. Start kind of balancing out what I'm going to do on a daily basis and knowing what projects need to get done. Maybe it's a friend's birthday is coming up and I need to get that person a gift for their birthday, things like that. I'll start putting reminders on my to-do list. Now my third list I have is my ongoing, um, or you can even call this like a master list. So these are things that I'm not doing immediately or right now, but eventually they're going to be moved over to my weekly or my today task list. This is also sometimes things that, yeah, I just have weekly, weekly tasks. Like they're just things I have to do every week. Workout, for example, I like to put workout on my today list. So I mentally know that that is coming. I'm an afternoon workout, but instead of deleting that card or archiving it, I'll just move it over to my ongoing task so that when I start making my list for the week, 
or the day I just move that card over and I'm not recreating it four times a week because that is not efficient. It could also be things like maybe I have a meeting coming up in a couple of weeks. Sure, it's on my calendar, but I'm gonna go ahead and add it to my Trello board with the due date. So you can add in due dates and times that something is happening. But I'll go ahead and put that on my ongoing list because it's not coming up within the next week. Um, you could also throw in here uh, maybe projects you wanna get to kind of, again, kind of your master list, like things that like have to get done and will get done, but maybe not immediately. That's what that list is for. And then I personally love to have a completed list. So anything that is not ongoing and I do actually get completed, I get to move. It's kind of that same idea of like checking something off on a piece of paper, moving it off of that list, putting it in that completed done list. And I like to keep this for the whole year. So I'll do like a 2020 completed list because sometimes when I feel like I haven't achieved enough or I haven't done enough things, I can just go through and scroll through and remind myself like I have made progress and I have completed a lot of things and this is proof right here. So for me, that is just one that I love. It may be irrelevant to you. You might not want to see those things ever again and that is okay. But for me, I love my completed to-do list. I also like to pick kind of like, so you have a title for each of your lists and I like to put little like words of encouragement. So for my today, today's list, currently it says, you're in control. So sometimes your to-do list can feel out of control. So just a reminder that like you're in control and you can get this done. My weekly list currently says what's important. So it's just a reminder to me to not just put everything on there for the week. Be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do all this and I'm gonna do that. And then this project that I haven't even started on that feels really overwhelming, I'm gonna throw it on this list because maybe I'll get it done this week. That's not what that list is for. That list is for you to really sit down and say, what am I going to accomplish this week? And what is the most important for me to get accomplished? Um, and then in my completed list, it just says, well done. Like, good job, pat on the back, you did it. So find whatever words of affirmation or inspiration you have. But I like a really like nice thing that I like to do for myself. Now another big piece of my Trello board is my goals. So on top of my tasks and to-do list, I like to have right in front of me what I've stated my goals and my priorities are. So this is another way in which you can use Trello to remind you of, you know, to achieve goals within your priority list. So I have my yearly goals, my 2020 goals that I've created based on my word of the year, which is establish. So what were the, all the things that I wanted to establish for the year? Those are my goals. Then I break that down into quarterly goals, which I typically make every 90 days. So as the quarter is approaching, the new quarter is approaching, I will sit down and look at what I completed in the previous 90 days. And then I'll look at my next goals for the next three months. This is partly based on the 90 day plan by Todd Herman. So if you want to go check that out, he has a whole program around reaching your goals in 90 day increments. And there's a lot of science behind it. So I break my yearly goals down into quarterly goals. And then I break those down into each month. So January, February, March, April. And so it's not just what's this overarching goal, but like, what are the actual steps I'm doing to get there? And then theoretically, you should be looking at those monthly goals on top of just your ongoing tasks and figuring out how, what tasks you need to do to achieve them. And that's where you create those cards and that's where you kind of put them on your today list. So again, I, this is something, those are all the lists I have. So that's what, 17 lists right there just helping me break down and see my goals. So it could be everything from a business goal to a life goal. So maybe, you know, one of my priorities for this year was to have a better established network and community of friends. So my friends, because I travel, are kind of all over the world and I wanted to do a better job of connecting with them and keeping those relationships going. So if I say that's a priority, then what is, how could I break that onto a goal, which could, for you, it could be anything. It could be once a week, you reach out to someone different. Maybe you set up more Zoom meetings. 
for quarter one when I could actually see people. My goal is to make one to two new friends a month. So like actually going out and meeting new people and having really genuine conversations. So that is sort of my, my goal setting and how I set that up and how I work that into my to-do and task list. And then some other lists that I keep track of are, I have a travel list. So I have it broken down in the description of kind of where I think I'll be each month or where I want to be. I can't do this right now, so this list is completely irrelevant, but it does help me keep track of my travel list and my travel to-dos, as well as like when I need to start booking and planning things. And also use that list for house sitting. Um, so houses I need to look for, houses I need to book, things like that. So that's sort of my like travel list for my travel life. I have a, um, a brain storm <laughs> list. Um, and so I use uh, within my cards, I use the checklist function a lot. So there's a description, there's activities, you can make comments, um, you can add due dates. For me, I use the checklist a lot. Um, there's also a feature where you can hide things you've already completed. So if you have 14 things, you only have five left, you only get to see those five. So that's really helpful for me. So sometimes I just fill in and I'm just like, I have all these video ideas or blog ideas and I just sit there and I just like kind of brainstorm stuff. I also have a list for programs, courses, or books that I've purchased or want to purchase. And then I color code them to know like kind of what categories is personal development, is this social media related, is this life related. And then I also, once I've completed them and I've gone through the course, I kind of changed the color on that as well. So I'll talk about color coding in a second, but that is one where I don't buy as many courses now as I did in my first couple years of working online, but it was getting to the point where I was having a hard time keeping track. And so I started making a list of those things. Um, and also just wants like, hey, this is a course that maybe I can't afford right now, but I want to in the future. That's a goal of mine. So I'm gonna throw it on this list of courses to purchase. So that is my main Trello board. Those are the main lists that I keep track of on a regular basis. And I mentioned color coding. So part of visual organization for me is having everything color coded so that I can quickly look and see what this task is related to. Same thing with my email inbox. And maybe I'll record a video on how I organize my email one day but everything in my trello board has a color assigned so anything that's black is client related task anything that's pink is social media related anything to do with traveling tailor my blog or my videos is orange and a lot of these colors i've picked i try to associate them as best i can so my brand color is orange so therefore everything traveling tailor is orange and everything in my email related to traveling tailor is also color coded orange. So the more you can kind of keep your colors consistent over multiple systems is also really going to help you. Um, I recently did this with a client of mine as well. She's working on color coding her meetings because she has a lot of meetings throughout the week and they were all one color. So we've kind of set that up. Um, and so she has you know, current clients, a dark green and prospective clients, a lighter green. Keeping them in the same color family, but slightly differentiating them will help her see, oh, this is, you know, coaching or client related versus a media appearance, which is going to be purple, something completely different. So um, figure out like what colors work for you and what makes the most sense. But pretty much everything on my Trello board has a color associated with it. Everything that's blue I know is a life related task that's just for me. And so I can quickly see on a daily or even weekly basis, you know, maybe I'm giving my clients a lot of my time and maybe that's necessary for that week, but then maybe the next week I'll throw in some more, you know, brand related or life related tasks. Now, some other ways that you can actually use Trello to your benefit is instead of having your list broken up by task lists, you can have them broken up by categories. So you can create your content calendar in Trello. You can have multiple boards. You don't just have to have one. So you can switch to a different board um, and you could have, you know, everything that's in, you know, here are your ideas. 
have a card list for everything that is sort of in production. Have another list for everything that's getting, you know, published or scheduled or things like that. So you can break it up into categories um, or kind of just like I said, like, oh, here's my travel. Here's my, you know, here's my goals. Not everything has to be necessarily a task list. You could also break it up. Um, if you're working on a project with other people, you could have a different list for each person and you can move the cards in between each person's list. One of the ways that I use it with one of my clients is each one of us in the company has our own board, but I have it set up with a zap. So we use Zapier to, or Zapier. And every time a file gets put into a specific folder, which is my folder, I automatically get a card onto my board. So that's how I'm notified that, hey, now it's your turn to work on this file that's actually in production. I also then have used an add-on into Trello, so connected to my Slack, so that I get a Slack bot every time a new card gets put onto my board. So this is just another notification system so I'm not just like wasting time checking, being like, hey, have you done that? Have you done that? Is it ready yet? Where are we in the process? I'm not wasting time bothering people figuring out what's going on because I'm the last person in the process. So it has to go through a lot before it gets to me. I have my board set up, I have some zaps set up, and then I have that add-on set up with Slack and so I get notifications that way. That is another, that's a little bit more advanced uh, way of using Trello, but it's, it's really simple. You can also assign people cards. So if you are working on a um, project with someone, like I had a client with her content creation, she would write the blog post and once it was sort of ready to go, then she would switch the assignment to me and I would know that was it was ready to go and I would go and put it into her WordPress or email newsletter or whatever it was that we were working on. So we could see like, you know, whose hands was it in. So that's another way that you can kind of assign tasks between people if you have different projects going on. Another way that you might be able to use it, so if you are a planner and you like to get into the details with multiple areas of your life, um, and say you're going on a trip, you could actually break down your boards. You could have a you could have a whole board just for travel, and you could break that down into like day one we're going here, day two we're doing this, or if you're going to multiple places on like a two week trip, for instance, you could say okay, in when we get to London, here's sort of the you know the highlights we want to hit. Here are the places we want to eat. When we get to Paris, we're gonna we want to do X Y Z. So you can kind of use it as like a bucket list for travel as well. So that is actually something that I haven't done, but I saw someone else does it. And I was like, oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> so uh, that might be something I'll I'll do in the future. So there you have it. There is Trello. Um, that is how I organize literally my life and everything that I do goes on there. I also have the app on my phone, so if I'm not around my computer, I can still look things up, I can still check them off, I can move them over. For me, I, I do still write notes, so I write notes when I'm in meetings and stuff, but for me, having my to-do list electronically and to have it on multiple devices has been super helpful. A lot of times I start brainstorming while I'm on a bus or a plane. And so having something functional, like quickly I can, you know, add it. And then once I get on my computer, I can still see it. That is super helpful for me. But yeah, whatever, whatever works for you. I am super curious if you use Trello, if you don't use Trello, what you think about it. Um, if this is something that you're interested in trying out, let me know. It is free. So they do, I think, have upgraded plans if you want more add-ons or anything, but I've used the free version for three years and it's done everything I need it to do. So it's not something that's going to cost you a lot. But yeah, let me know. Thanks for hanging out with me. This is a little bit longer video, but I really love to talk about task organization and I hope you found it helpful. So be sure to subscribe and catch my video next Tuesday.